Welcome, we're excited that you are joining us for SACAC's first virtual conference. Our session is focused on space and grace and how we can shift from survival to success. We feel that so many of us can relate to this topic and are hopeful that we'll be able to provide you with a space to give yourself grace, as well as provide you with resources and strategies as you continue to navigate this unique time. My name is Christy Conley and I currently serve as a school counselor at North Oconee High School right outside of Athens, Georgia. I'm honored to be here today with my co-presenters. At this time, each panelist will introduce themselves and share a little bit about their current position. We'll start with Ms. Brandy Smith. Hi everyone, um, I'm Brandy Smith. I'm one of the college advisors at Marietta High School um, right outside of Atlanta. Um, we're a large suburban uh, public school and excited to be here with you all today. Hi, I'm Ashley Armato. I'm in Miami, Florida at Palmer Trinity School. I'm the Senior Associate Director of College Counseling and one of three Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinators. And hi, I'm Anne edmonds Aguirre, and I'm the Director of College Counseling at Notre Dame High School in Chattanooga. And we're very excited to be here uh, with you in this virtual space. And I want to share a little bit about where the session title, Space and Grace, came from. So about mid-April of 2020, I received a fundraising email from Texas Public Radio. I was living in San Antonio at the time, and I'm a big NPR fan. And Bonnie Petrie, who is a Texas Public Radio's bioscience and medicine reporter, had been interviewing a child therapist about how families were managing all of the cooped up quarantine during this time. And the therapist said, you know, we just need to give everyone some space to which Bonnie added and grace. And the therapist agreed, yes, and grace. And so space and grace became a mantra for Bonnie when her children were getting on her last nerve or where coworkers were just not doing what they were supposed to give them space and grace, she thought. Uh, when she was mad at herself for not being able to to fully function like she could pre-pandemic, give myself space and grace. Uh, it became such a mantra, they made t-shirts. So whoop, there we go, got the t-shirts. So, uh, and, uh, and something that I've used uh, personally in my life. And also a year ago, uh, my father had just gotten discharged from a hospital stay, an 11 day hospital stay with COVID. Uh, because he had three comorbidities, we didn't expect him to survive. Thankfully, he did. Uh, and my husband and I drove from San Antonio to New Orleans, which you may recall was one of the hotbeds of the coronavirus at this time. And we needed to help out my parents, help my mother take care of my father, because all of his regular caretakers, they were still in quarantine. And thus began the most challenging and stressful time of my entire life. Uh, I want to say... Uh, something about the power of social media because during that time uh, while we were learning more about the virus and trying to figure out what was going on uh, and before we even got to New Orleans um, sharing my father's story on social media was very uh, was very helpful because of course it was a quick way to share with hundreds of people thousands of people um, that we couldn't keep updated personally with my family um, we, we very much treasured the, the prayer requests from friends and family all over the world. Uh, that was really um, critical. We believe in my father's, uh, my father's recovery as well as our ability to just navigate that very challenging and stressful time. Um, but I also wanna share that uh, because memories can pop up with Facebook, for example, uh, to be cognizant that some memories can be more painful. Um, and so as I have watched my Facebook memories come up recently, um, I'm just aware that there are going to be some memories that are going to be very triggering for me of a, a very stressful time. So uh, be cognizant of that and give yourself the space and grace to maybe not look at those memories. Um, we've come a long way. And for me, the pandemic started out with a bang. And while it's had its ups and downs since then, uh, just counting our blessings. Um, so a couple months after we got back to Texas, uh, I, before the pandemic, had actually started uh, wanting to transition my uh, career to college counseling. I was working on the college side in student success. 
And the day, uh, two days after I got the job offer to work here at Notre Dame High School, this was somewhere in mid to late May, uh, two days later, I got laid off from St. Mary's University due to uh, budget constraints from the pandemic. Um, God had a plan and my husband willingly, who had never lived north of San Antonio, was willing to move with me to Chattanooga where he had never been. Uh, and, and we're counting our blessings because we have been in school this year. And that has allowed me to look students in the face and ask them, how are you doing? What have you learned about yourself during the pandemic? And then give them the space and grace to respond. Um, I, I wanna give credit to my colleague, John Hawkins, who shared how he would ask all of our college reps for all the virtual visits. And, and I continued this trend to ask, how are you holding up today? How are you holding up these days? And then giving people the space and the grace to listen. And we have lots of things going on. And sometimes when someone shares what's going on, it's you're, you're just gonna need to be patient with them. Um, I am more patient with others than I am with myself. And uh, so I have had to give myself a lot of grace that I wasn't gonna be able to come in in a year and build a top-notch college counseling program in one year, much less during a COVID year. So I needed to give myself a lot of grace in that. Um, another way that I really had to give myself grace um, for context, probably about 12, 14 years ago, I lost 50 pounds on Weight Watchers. And ever since then, I have weighed myself daily. Well, I love to bake and I love to share, and, but I also love to eat what I bake too. And so, especially in the last several months, there have been many times where I just might've eaten more and drunk more than, than, than maybe I would have. And so I have skipped the scale. I had to let myself go of that tradition and just give myself the grace to skip the scale. Um, I also want to give a shout out to, to Jeff Schiffman, who on a SACAC session sometime in the fall mentioned the call map. Uh, I had heard of the app before, I had tried it, but he mentioned that American Express cardholders were getting a free subscription for a year. And that was a trigger for me to say, okay, I'm going to start using this. Um, not just the daily meditations, but the sleep stories, which I even used last night. And now they have sleep music uh, songs. We've come a long way with regard to knowing about the virus, knowing how to mitigate uh, the spread of the pandemic. But I think it's important to realize that we are still living in the throes of terrible things going on because of the pandemic and the, and the racial unjust that, that has gone on in our country. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it to my colleague, Ashley, to share some more. Thanks, Anne. I know a lot of what you mentioned certainly resonates with me, and I know it'll resonate with other people as well. Um, as we were talking about this session and talking about, you know, how far we've come in terms of coping mechanisms and what we've learned about ourselves um, and the grace and the space that we're trying to give ourselves daily, um, you know, there's also the idea out there that um, that we've we've made it, and then there's a vaccine now, and we're going to be in a better place. Um, but just from personal experience, um, and this happened even more recently than when we chose to, you know, um, get together and kind of think up this session. Um, I currently have three, four, five family members right now who have COVID. Um, so certainly, you know, given all of the political, um, all of the political stuff that's going on in the world, um, and our attentions have been diverted, and there's the vaccine. Um, there are still the COVID still out there. People are still getting it. That's still a really real fact of people's daily lives. Um, I, I'm in Miami. Miami Beach is in a state of emergency right now because of the influx of visitors and travelers who um, are not wearing masks and not following social distance or COVID protocols. Um, so you know we have come very far and learned so much about ourselves, and I think that. Um, I certainly know that in the communities that we're all a part of, we are trying to um, protect one another and, you know, be really thoughtful. Um, Americans, we tend to be a very individualistic society. Um, so I think we have to actively work towards, you know, building that kind of community where we put others first and think of others. Um, but that's not everywhere. So, you know, it's tough when we're trying to do what's right you know, within our own places, but that's not the world that we live in sometimes too. So it's 
it's very, very difficult to kind of, um, I think, to hold both of those things at the same time, to know that you're doing what you're supposed to do, but then actively see others, you know, do the opposite. And in certain states, there are no more mask mandates. Um, so there's just, there's, there's this overwhelming message that we're getting over it, but we're still going through it in a really real way, particularly with racial unjust, um, as Anne mentioned, um, the protests during last summer, um, and certainly the way that COVID has negatively and disproportionately impacted people of color um, and people based on social class, the type of jobs that people hold. It's been a double pandemic for, um, for BIPOC folks and, and people in our families in particular. Um, and right now with the rise in anti-Asian, East Asian in particular, hate, um, there's, there's just a lot that's pandemic related that's feeding into you know, some of the worst parts of us. Um, so there's just a lot to take in. And from a, from a personal perspective, um, I try to be really aware of what's going on. I try to pay attention. Um, I try to keep up on social media. I try to educate myself about communities that I need to learn more about and, you know, look within to understand what I'm not seeing or what I'm not understanding and how I can be a better ally and accomplice to folks. But I think what I've learned over the pandemic as well is that it's okay to, to filter the media that you see until you're ready to take it. I think there is such a thing as overload and you know I would never hope to be willfully ignorant about anything. Um, but at the same time, just being able to understand that we're only human and we can only take so much at a certain amount of time. So I think kind of figuring out what that means for you and what you consume and what you're comfortable doing and the conversations that you want to engage in or choose to engage in um, all of that is, you know, within this theme of um, space and grace and figuring out, you know, how you can do what you can do, but when you can do it. Um, and I think it's fair, you know, to give yourself that kind of leeway and to, you know, have those types of conversations with yourself as well. Um, thanks. I'm going to pass it over to Brandy now. Um, thanks, Ashley. Um, I, I want to sort of continue a little bit of that. Uh, I think we sometimes have expectations on ourselves as adults and especially as adults who are caretakers to young people that we always have to have it together. And I think the reality is, is as adults, many of us are still trying to figure out how to process everything that's happening um, and definitely trying to help students to process it. And so I think it is okay to just not be okay. I don't think we um, say that to ourselves enough, but it is absolutely okay. Um, like Anne, um, I have also used the Calm app quite a bit for the sleep stories, um, but I've also used another app called the Shine app, um, which is an app actually created by women of color um, that gives just some daily reminders and affirmations of just like, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. And that has been super helpful um, in a way that I didn't realize it would necessarily be helpful. Uh, one thing I have found too is that um, in addition to all the things that Ashley talked about as far as like Rachel unjust in this country, the other thing that has also been challenging, I think for a lot of us is just where our profession is, like the state of our profession, right? There's so, there's so many unknowns still. Um, I sort of have described to a lot of people how I feel about from this time to May is like, I'm just holding my breath. I'm just like, <gasps> like what's coming, because I feel like on a daily basis, it's changing. Um, and in a lot of ways, I feel like we're sort of in the wild, wild west. I think in some ways, that is exciting, because we get to sort of break down some systems and create them from the ground up. In another sense, it's very scary, because you want to you want to know what that's going to look like for students. We very much um, work in a cyclical profession. We work really well in cycles because we know that cycle is going to end soon and we're going to start a new cycle. And now we don't really know what those cycles are going uh, to look like. And so I think what is incredibly important is that now more than ever, uh, the importance of relationships is at the core of, I think, everything we do. I know a lot of folks have been Zoomed out, like so tired of Zooms, uh, but I'll tell you that it has been my Zooms with my friends and my colleagues in this profession that have for sure sustained me. Um, if it weren't for that, I'm not sure that I would have been able to make it 
uh, through the last few months, the summer, uh, before the pandemic started, I was actually at home because I had had a major surgery. So I was actually watching the pandemic as it was unfolding, being like, oh, this is not, this is going to be a little bit different than what we thought it was going to um, be. And, you know, we all have our own personal circumstances, whether we're taking care of parents or taking care of family members, or even if we're not taking care of anyone, even if we are at home alone in isolation, I think there are just so many different things that we're dealing with. And so I think that's why it's so important to have some space and grace with yourself. Um, we're all going to mess up. We're all probably going to step in it at some point. And I think we all just have to be okay. I've had some friends that like I haven't heard from in a minute and I will just check in, just be like, I just want to know you're breathing. Just want to know you're okay. Like you don't owe me anything else. I just want to know that you're okay um, as a check-in point. And I think that has really um, helped a lot. Um, you know, the whole notion of self-care, I struggle with that a lot. Um, to me, it's, it's one of those phrases that sounds really good, but um, the execution is always a little bit of a challenge for me. But I think you find uh, self-care in different ways. Um, and sometimes that can be just like Ashley said, like limiting what you are allowing into your space. Um, I've spent a lot of time thinking about like, like what energy I put out and what energy I receive back. And like, you know, this weekend, especially living in the metro Atlanta area, I mean, it was a rough week last week. Um, I had to sort of back away from social media this weekend. I was like, I just can't uh, do it. And that's okay. Um, and I think especially for those who are constantly in the struggle of like fighting for racial justice, there are going to be times where you just have to sort of say, I'm going to sit out, I'm going to need somebody else to take the reins uh, for this. And, and that's totally, totally okay. Meditation, I highly, highly recommend. I think it helps a lot of people to just be able to clear their mind and to be able to be like, it's going to be okay. But I think once again, just talking to folks um, and and getting a sense of like, that you're not on an island by yourself, I think is incredibly helpful um, because we don't know what it's gonna be like. I mean, I think some of our schools have started to make decisions about what the fall is gonna look like, but even they don't fully know like how that's gonna happen. So I think um, in a lot of ways it has stretched us to be flexible in ways that we have never been flexible uh, before. And I think we, we got to be okay with that. Like, uh, I think it's taught some of us some serious, like critical thinking skills in ways that we didn't anticipate that that was going to happen. But I do hope um, that as we embark on these next few years, which are going to be challenging for us as adults and for kids, that that flexibility um, is a reminder to us that like we can get through this. Christy? I'm excited to talk about resources and hopefully strategies that you guys can implement and take back to your school. I'm going to share my screen, hopefully, and um, show you guys some of the resources that we have presented. Let's see. Uh, there we go. All right, so we first wanna talk about resources for adults and kind of leave off with where really Anne, Ashley and Brandy talk through with, we can't help others if we're not in a healthy place ourselves. And so we definitely wanna make sure that we're communicating with all adult, adults um, that it's okay to not be okay and find some ways to, to get you back. We talk often about mental health and how it can be a pendulum and where you can swing to a, an unhealthy place. And we wanna definitely find some, some resources to help people get back into that healthy mental, hate, mental health spotlight. So um, some of the resources have already been mentioned, but I wanna highlight those just because I feel like they are very helpful for lots of people. And that's definitely the Calm and the Shine app. And we have linked those in our presentation. So if you're not familiar, we have a direct link so that you can look into those and, and check those out a little further. Um, Anne and Brandy spoke to how those have worked for them particularly, but have heard lots of stories from lots of different people about how those have been really a lifeline for them to be able to get healthy sleep. If you're not functioning on 
good sleep, then sometimes you don't make the best decisions and your emotions can be a little out of whack. So we definitely wanted to put that first and foremost because that's such an important part of having a healthy space. Um, and then definitely carving out time for things that make you happy. Um, and so that can look very different for people and talked about cooking and baking and I, along with her, enjoy the eating aspect. And so um, trying different foods and I always associate um, food with people and with relationships and um, memories. And so that definitely is something that also can be, but uh, we have some people that um, I was on a presentation the other day and he's talking about he took up knitting um, and has developed a new skill. So this could be a good time for, for people to find something new that makes them happy and push themselves outside their comfort zones a little bit for that. Um, but also a time for us to be vulnerable. Um, I think that a lot of times we have faked it until we made it. And that is still very much probably a mantra that many of us are continuing, but also to know that it's okay to share with others that you might be struggling or that there are things going on um, because I think that has really brought our relationships to a deeper level. That's some of the, the things we've talked about in preparing for this session is how really being open about things that are happening in our profession or in our personal lives um, with others has really deepened our connection with people. So I do think that that is definitely a resource and something that we want to come as a panel and say it is okay to share that you are, are not okay. And then definitely practicing self-care um, and finding what really works for you. Um, I think we all on this panel have different things that are plugs for us that really refill our bucket and make us feel better, whether that's getting your nails done or um, buy a new nail polish if you're not in a place to where you can, can go out and do that, but doing something that makes you feel better um, and takes care of you. Seeking comfort in routines. Um, I think we have all had different entries back into school. And so that routine might be a little harder to find this year. And so coming up with specific routines of what your day looks like, whether you're virtual or in person, or as those are shifting back and forth, um, how are you coping um, with having something that you are doing every day to give that consistency to yourself? Um, and then we laughed and, and talked about dressing up even if you're not going anywhere, even if it's just a, a virtual visit with someone, um, getting up, putting your, your clothes on and changing out of your yoga pants or your you know, sweatpants and t-shirt, um, but to act like you are, are really going somewhere, putting your makeup on um, and making yourself feel more presentable. Even if you're not dressing up for anybody else, you're dressing up for yourself. I think that was one of Brandy's plugs um, during our chats that she enjoys. Um, just making it about herself and that she's good with herself. I mean, then we know so much that how we feel um, and think through things is, is if we're taking good care of ourselves. And we talked about definitely the sleeping, but eating well and doing exercise um, is such a key thing. There's so many apps available um, to do exercise from home without any equipment. Um, so definitely want to plug for people to, to continue to take care of their minds and their bodies. Um, and so I know that when we were under quarantine, we would have dance party time at my house. I have three younger kids. They're um, 10, 8, and 5. And so getting our energy was definitely a focal point for us. Um, and so we would have dance party time and they would get to pick the songs and we would dance around the house. So definitely think about ways that you can move, um, whether it's in your office at school or um, in your building, or even if you're at home in your own bedroom, um, what are some ways that you can get some of that energy out in a healthy way? And changing of scenery. I know that that can be another thing of seeing just the screen every day, all day has to be a little depressing. And so we make, want to make sure that if it's beautiful here um, today in Georgia, and so definitely get out and get some vitamin D and um, definitely see a different scene than your computer screen or just your one room that you might be in. And then Brandy definitely alluded to meditation and prayer. Um, and so finding a way to just 
unfocus a little bit from what's going on around you and focus on what's happening inside of you. Um, so those are definitely strategies that we have for adults. And if any of my panelists want to jump in and speak to any of those, feel free to hop on. Yeah, I just, I just want to add to you that because I do think this is incredibly important, the like eating well and the exercise, absolutely important, but I do also think it's important for you to have some grace with yourself if you've fallen off the wagon, if you've gained weight, like I think that that is okay. Um, we're, we're not back to normal. Um, I think of my own journey where I had a surgery, I lost a lot of weight and then the pandemic, I feel like I had like a delayed reaction to it and my weight has gone up significantly. Um, but I'm still working at being healthy and like trying to figure out what works best for me. But I've also realized that like it wasn't until age 41 that like I could fully accept like, you know what, like I'm still fire. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like it doesn't matter if I've gained an extra 20 or 30 pounds, like I'm still the same person inside and like accepting like what that means. And so I think, you know, and that's been a long journey over years. I think for many of us who have struggled with weight, you know, throughout the years, it takes a lot to be comfortable with sort of who you are. Um, and I, you know, I think to myself, like in those moments where I'm like, oh, like you should have done better. You know, it's like, I just put on some Lizzo and I'm like, man, like what a different world it would be if I would have grown up with a Lizzo, right? Like who just had this like idea of like body image, not defining like who you are. And so um, I do think it's important uh, to know that like you are, perfectly made how you are. Um, and if that's what you want to do, if you want to st strictly focus on like losing weight, then by all means go at it, but like, don't let it define you. I think the mere fact that many of us have gotten through this last year is a miracle within itself. And so if that means that like, maybe you ate a few more steaks or you had a few more cupcakes, like I think that that is completely okay. And so I just wanted to to say, I do think that's important. And then another thing that I didn't share when we had a discussion, but as I was sitting here reflecting is one thing that has really given me some hope, especially on the days where I feel like I have no hope. Um, I don't have children, but talking to my friends who do have children, who see, especially small children, who see the world in a completely different way. There are times where um, I will call Christy and, and she's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to talk to the kids. Like, what are, what are the kids doing, right? And like her five-year-old, like, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. He's always living his best life. And it like, it brings me joy. I have some other friends in Florida, like their kids wear them out, but like they are entertaining to me. And I love to like, just be able to talk to them because they see the world in such an unjaded way uh, that we as adults oftentimes struggle uh, to do. So that could be another thing uh, to think about is to, or, or maybe you have kids and you're just tired of kids, maybe just pick somebody else's kids um, and, <laughs> and, and talk to them. But I just think uh, we've got to find the small ways that give us, you know, just a little bit of hope. And actually, when you were speaking, I had another thought that came to me about community. Um, and another strategy or resource might be doing something for others and realizing that there are ways that even with all this going on, or even more so with this going on, there are ways that we can give back to other people. Because that's one of the things that refills my bucket. If I do something for somebody else and make them feel better, then it makes me feel better. And so that's building our community and also refilling our own buckets as well. So I think that could be another one that we, that we add to our list. Yeah, and I would piggyback on that to say just remembering that while yes, we are we are not okay, we're still struggling. There's others who are likely struggling even more. So we, my husband, and I volunteered at a mobile food pantry this weekend, right? So, um, you know, just being cognizant of there's others who are still struggling, and and I want to also circle back to Brandy's comments about it's okay to not be okay. Um, while I don't think it's on our resource list. Uh, I think it would, we would be remiss if we didn't just give a shout out to the mental health uh, counseling community, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever form uh, they exist in. Um, you know, our school counselor has had a busy, a busy year. And one of the, I hope, silver linings 
uh, that will come out of the pandemic is that it's okay to not be mentally healthy that for something that's going on, and it's okay for you to get help for that. Uh, and I think we've all found ourselves making referrals uh, to students, uh, to even colleagues and family members. I think you need to talk to somebody about this um, because, because these are unprecedented times. Um, and so hopefully that will reduce the stigma of mental health out there. Yes. That was a good point, and we did put the hotlines on the student slide, but we did not on the adults, and they really should be on both of those. So I think that is an excellent point. Um, and moving on into resources for students, they do sound very similar in some ways to ours as adults. Um, but basically, we, I think the theme is finding ways to make yourself feel better, whether that's your, your body, your mind, and, and just your soul. Um, and so however that works for you, students also need to fill those, those moments too. Um, and definitely I find that for students, even like we're in person and we've been in person since August, but our students are really still struggling to find a connection. Um, particularly our new students have really struggled this year with finding their niche because there's not a lot of club activities, there's not a really good way to meet people when you're um, socially distanced and mask on. So they're having a really hard time. So we're trying to find ways to, to plug those students. And as that's happening, we're also hearing from our traditional students that have been with us that they are needing those tips too, of finding ways to, to feel like they have a space and a connection within our school as well as our, our local community. So definitely something that I think people are looking for. We did list the hotlines and they range um, really the spectrum. We linked to all of the hotlines that are available just because a lot of different people are dealing with a lot of different um, mental health um, issues right now. And so we wanted to provide as many supports as we could in that form. And then meditation keeps coming up over and over. Um, and I am not a meditation person. I find that my brain goes 50,000 directions, but I'm trying. Um, and so there's lots of great apps out there, Headspace, Stop, um, Breathe and Think, and then Happify. And so we link those just in case you wanted to have those to share with students as well. Um, and as a counselor, I definitely do agree with, with Anne that we are seeing an increase of um, referrals for things. And so we have tried to implement some healthy outlets, um, such as journaling, really pushing that with students, whether that's, you know, a physical journal, where they're physically writing, or whether they're, you know, typing their own um, in their Google Docs or whatever, and then they can share with us if they want to or not, or that's just something they keep personally. But then there's also a, the adult coloring books, and um, our students definitely enjoy those, but you can also do that virtually as well through Colorfy um, is a very popular app, and so just trying to help them find some healthy outlets um, to really kind of disconnect, I think, in some ways from things and just not let their mind um, be focused on what's going on, but just to wander and, and not think about things in general. Um, and then also finding ways to laugh. There's great Instagram um, pages to follow or just people in your life um, that are funny and humorous or shows, um, but find ways to, to find the joy in every day. Um, and I do think that our students really connect with that. Um, and so definitely something we wanted to plug again for students as well as adults, because I know I'm always in a better space if I can um, find a way to find joy. And so um, also to piggyback about referring out, um, if you are in a school setting or even as a, a college admissions rep, and you have some concerns about students or need resources, definitely reach out to the school counselor um, within that school so that they can find some therapist or counseling in the community for the student. Um, so definitely if you have concerns, make sure you communicate those. Um, and then we always want to try to be available to listen to students. I know that things are, are crazy and busy and I find myself just wanting to check things off my list but we are finding that people just want to talk, um, whether that's our students or our teachers or even our admin. Um, we're trying to give a lot of grace to all people in our building because they're having to make a lot of decisions and adjustments. And so that weighs on everybody. And so we want to make sure that we 
try to be a support just for them to come in and vent um, as well. And so um, we left that kind of the last because I think people just want to be heard, especially in times where things are, are really difficult. So we hope that you find our resources helpful um, and that our panel, if you have any other thoughts or um, resources that you thought of as we were talking that you want to add? I think I want to echo the finding ways to laugh. I've watched a lot of comedies uh, during this last year and um, admittedly a lot of that was protecting myself because I wasn't able to handle serious drama. I just needed fantasy. I watched a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. Uh, and uh, even after Christmas, right? I gave myself to grace to watch Hallmark Christmas movies before Thanksgiving and even after, uh, after Epiphany. And so um, just, you know, finding, finding outlets and sometimes fantasy is just an outlet from this reality that we're just still pinching ourselves <laughs> is, is the current reality. It's funny that you say that. I never watch holiday movies, but this year I totally did. Like, I was like, I'm going to dig in. I was like, it's interesting that most of these occur in a fake European country. Um, <laughs> but I think it, they're interesting and it was totally about escapism. So yeah. I, I agree that that was super helpful. Um, I also like when you talk about music for your soul, I love music um and it definitely feels like therapy to me so like in the last like few months in particular like i've been down the rabbit hole of like british soul and like r&b music which has been so awesome and i've been able to create like all these different playlists and that sometimes is like the only thing that can like calm me down before i like go to sleep at night because i'm like an insomniac and this pandemic has my sleep pattern all the way messed up um and so sometimes it's either the sleep stories on calm or like the music playlist that I've created that can like help just like bring it down a notch um so that I can get some rest so uh, I highly highly recommend that I was just thinking echo. go ahead Ashley oh, I'm sorry I was gonna say I would echo both those things um watching lots of series on Netflix and escaping that way um, and also music, um, just music that feeds your soul. And music, I think I miss, I miss dancing. You know, I miss dancing when having fun through dancing. Um, I love Latin music and it's just, you know, you can dance on your own and it's still, you know, fun and cathartic, but it's just different with, with people's energy around also. So I definitely miss that. Um, but also on the, I just wanted to add on the opposite spectrum of like escapism and fantasy. I've seen more and more students, even with everything that they're dealing with, with um, hybrid learning and, you know, just a different kind of curriculum that we've had to use to adapt to what's going on right now and staggered dismissals and having to clean after classes, you know, things have had to sacrifice in our, you know, our curriculum, I think, has they've had to, um, you know, decrease some of the learning in classes just to accommodate all of the extra stuff that's going on. You know, we have a lunch schedule that like, I think you need like a physics degree to figure out like when everyone's <laughs> eating, like it's like, I have no idea what's going on ever. But I think to that too, I, I've still been so, so um, just uh, like inspired by students who are still looking at what's going on in this world and want to do something about it. And not just, you know, to have something on their resume. I mean, we've got those, we've all got those. Um, but just the kids, you know, in our middle school who created a social justice club this year after what happened this summer, you know, they wanted to have more conversations about it and wanted to draw their peers in. Um, and that was completely just on their own out of their peer desire to, to, to educate themselves, to educate others and to have these important conversations. Um, we continue to have students really invested in, you know, our, you know, upper school curriculum, which we call Mosaic. Um, and that stuff has, we, um, we've also been putting stuff, you know, during awareness months like Hispanic Heritage or Black History, Women's History, um, coming up with, um, you know, books to read and Instagram stories for us to post on social media. Like this is stuff that they're, they're still caring about, perhaps caring about in a different way. I know there's been lots of metaphors about we're all kind of in the same storm together, but we're all on different kinds of boats and we're weathering it differently. Um, so I, you know, find lots of inspiration in our students wanting to have these conversations, wanting to, you know, highlight some of the inequity, recognizing their privilege in some ways. Um, so for the ones who are really, 
doing that. And, and those, those students have really um, helped me stay sane and helped me feel like, you know, I'm doing something in all of this and I'm, I'm helping them to do something too. I think that um, that's kind of the direction I was going to go. Out of the struggle, there really has been um, a sense of resiliency that I see with so many of our our students and even with our our faculty of ways to think about doing things better and smarter and more equitable. And so I do feel like there's been a really rough road, um, but I am glad to know that it has really challenged us to think about things in a different way than the normal that we've had. And I'm hopeful that we'll continue to see um, some of those changes in, in thinking um, as we move through hopefully a, a, a different normal um, that will be soon. Anything else you guys feel like we need to add? I guess even after this pandemic is no longer declared a pandemic, I think it'll just still be important to give ourselves and, and our, our students and our colleagues that space and grace. And just um, sometimes we're just, we're quick to judge, we're quick to move on and, and just being there for each other. I hope that that will be um, a new way to approach, approach life and approach our relationships. And we're so used to doing everything the way we've done it for a million years too. And, you know, people talk about going back to normal, but normal was not great all the time. Um, so in terms of figuring out how we can do things differently, more equitably, I mean, there's lots of great conversations that I know they're having in our profession and just in general in education. Um, so kind of figuring out what, can, what did we learn from this and what are we learning still? And, you know, how can we how can we rethink what we've done in ways that are better for everybody? And, you know, a lot of, I see so much about like, well, kids aren't getting everything they, they should have, they should be getting, or they're missing out, or they're, they're trying to, they're going to have to pay catch up, but it's like, why, what are we, what are we trying to get them to? And do we have to re-envision what that finish line or what that, what that looks like too? So I hope we all really take advantage of the fact that we have the opportunity to reimagine a lot of things moving forward too. Absolutely. I think um, we also have to remember that as we go through each month and as we go through each cycle, we're still learning how to adapt to this. And I think we just have to be willing to, to give us ourselves space and grace, right? Like I've been thinking a lot, like, um, you know, even if like a NACAC is going to happen in the fall, right? Like people are excited to see each other, but like that's gonna be different than it's ever been before, right? And so just being okay, knowing that like, it's gonna be different than, it's, it's not going back to, you know, the same things we experienced before when we, we would go to a conference and just like being okay, like transitioning back in. And for some people they're gonna jump back in and other people are gonna dip their toe in the water and like, that's okay. like. People have to do it at their own pace, um, but just it's important to not only have space and grace with others, but truly to have space and grace with yourself. Don't push yourself to feel a certain way or to feel like it has to happen in a certain time period because it doesn't. It just, it will happen as it's supposed to happen for each of us as individuals. And we just have to um, have a little bit of faith and just be okay with that. Well, I think that finishes up our presentation today. We hope that you have gained some resources and, and definitely feel the ability to give yourself and others space and grace as we continue to move through um, our, our new normal for a little while. And, and as it continues, as um, Brandy and Ashley talked, um, into a new normal. And so we thank you for being with us and we enjoyed sharing with you. Thank you. Have a great day. Enjoy the conference. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.